practical 8 paper comprises volumetric estimations. So, two experiments will be set up here for practical 8. One is estimation of carboxylic acid, another is estimation of amino acid. So, 50 percent of the students will get carboxylic acid, 50 percent of the students will get amino acid for the examination. So, in both the cases, first step is to standardize sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide will be given in the brown bottles. So, sufficient amount of sodium hydroxide whose normality is approximately 0.1 is given to you, DC normal. So, first you have to standardize this sodium hydroxide. Meaning is, you have to find out the exact normality of sodium hydroxide that is supplied to you. So, in the other colorless bottle, for estimation of carboxylic acid, oxalic acid whose normality is 0.1 is given to you. So, here first you prepare out 25 cc of oxalic acid into 250 ml glass. Fill the burette with sodium hydroxide that is supplied to you and then using phenolphthalein indicator, it is a simple acid based titration. So, after putting out 25 ml of oxalic acid into the flask, you add 250, uh, 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Take care to see that you are adding the indicator after removing the pipette from the conical flask. Otherwise, you will be contaminating the solution that you are using and take, see that you are removing the pipette and then you are adding the indicator. So, you add 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Meanwhile, you fill the unit with the given sodium hydroxide. Titrate the solution with sodium hydroxide. The end point should be pale pink color which should be stable at least for 30 to 40 seconds. So, many a times what happens? It appears, pink color appears and disappears. You need to continue the addition drop wise so that you will get the pale ticker stable for 30 to 40 seconds. You can check it with your watches and see that whether you are going to see the color for 30 to 40 seconds. Whatever way you are doing it, for the second continuation of the experiment, the same set of procedures have to be followed. So, each time you see that you maintain the same timings uh, of color disappearance about 30 to 40 or sometimes a little more than that also. And take care to see that each time when you are repeating the titration, wash your flask thoroughly with tap water and then rinse it with distilled water. So, each time when you are using uh, either an acid or when you change your acid or the stock solution, you have to rinse your pipette also. And the titrations have to be continued till you get two parts time readings. So, here the marks will be not only for your concordant value, it should be for correct value also. The correct value within an error of plus or minus 0.2 ml that uh, gives you the accurate or the correct value. You have to report minimum of two concordant values and the rest of the procedures already been given in the class. You need to take the exam the signature of the each titration. Once the title value is entered, you are not supposed to change the value. So, until and unless the situation demands with the permission of the examiner is concerned, you are not changing the title values in your answer sheet. So, after getting the concordant values for the first part, that is, calculate the normality of sodium hydroxide using the relation V1 L1 is equal to V2 L2. Normality of oxalic acid is 0.1, exactly 0.1. So, find out the normality of sodium hydroxide. Once you finish this first part of the experiment, thoroughly rinse your flask and the pipette using the tap water and the distilled water. Meanwhile, in the standard flask, some volume of unknown solution of the carboxylic acid will be given to you. So, you make it up to the mark here that is given 
So first you add it to the neck directly using the uh, distilled water bottle. Then rinse your pipette with distilled water. Take distilled water, add through the pipette so that exactly you will add it up to the mark. Once you add it up to the mark, the lower meniscus touching the mark, uh, put the lid and shake it well for the uniform concentration. So this is the carboxylic acid solution that you are estimating. Once you make up the solution and shake it well for uniform concentration, pipette out 25 ml of this solution to the flask, add 2 to 3 drops of clean off the lean indicator, fill the burette with the same sodium hydroxide that is given in the brown bottle and do the titration to make the same end point that is pale pink color stable for 30 to 40 seconds. Then get, you repeat this titration till you get concordant or constant volumes and then do the calculation. So that is about the estimation of carboxylic acid. The other experiment that you are going to get is estimation of amino acid whose which, which is usually the first amino acid glycine whose equivalent weight is 75 so you should remember the equivalent weights of both the carboxylic acid and the amino acid that you are going to do it in the examination the procedure part is same uh, as in the case of carboxylic acid here for you instead of oxalic acid in the estimation of amino acid potassium hydrogen PHP is labeled and given to you in the colorless bottle and sodium hydroxide approximately decinormal or 0.1 normal is going to be given in the brown bottle. So first rinse and uh, fill the burette with sodium hydroxide, pipette out 0.1 normal, normality is given to be 0.1 here, 0.1 normal uh, PHP that is potassium hydrogen phthalate into the conical class add two drops of phenophthalein indicator and titrate the solution with sodium hydroxide till you get pale pink color stable for 30 to 40 seconds. Repeat the experiment to get concordant volume. So after getting the concordant volume, find out the normality of sodium hydroxide given to you. So next part is rinse the uh, flask and the pipette and the amino acid will be given to you in the standard flask. Make it up to the mark as I said before and shake it well for uniform concentration. Then keep it over 25 ml of that amino acid solution in the flask. Add phenolphthalein, fill the burette with same sodium hydroxide and do the titration to get the pale pink color as endpoint stable for 30 to 40 seconds. Repeat the titration to get concordant volume. So the rest is calculation part. So here you need to be careful regarding the end point. There are chances you may not get the concordant values even after repeating several times. That is because you are not maintaining the factors that are responsible for the stability of the color. So time is very very important. If you perform the titration and stop it observing for 30 to 40 seconds, you should maintain the same timings. So whatever condition you are using for determination of the end point, you should constantly keep it up so that there will not be any problem in getting the concordant volume. So this is about practical need. In the case of amino acid estimation, there will be a burette filled with neutral formalin. Before you start titrating the amino acid, first pipette out 25 cc of amino acid, add 10 ml of neutral formalin directly from the burette. Then add phenolphthalein indicator and do the titration to the end point. So again I will repeat in the case of amino acid, after pipetting out 25 ml of amino acid, from the burette filled with neutral formalin, release 10 ml of neutral formalin to 25 ml of amino acid, add 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein indicator and do the titration to get the end point stable for 30 to 40 seconds. Wish you all good luck.